In Pro Show Producer, transparency masking is used to control what you can and can't see in a slide. It's just like using a stencil or tape when painting. You use these to create shapes that show or hide what's underneath. With transparency masks, it doesn't matter what colors are used or how light or dark they are. The only things that matter are size, shape, and location. Let's create an example. In this slide, I have a map of the Earth. Let's create a mask that will change what part of this layer will be visible during my show. Double click on the slide to open the slide options window. In the layers list toolbar, click this plus icon to add a new layer and then choose add solid color. Remember, when working with transparency masks, it doesn't matter what color you use. So what I like to do is use a really obvious color, like red. This will really stand out in my layers list and will help me quickly identify when I'm using a transparency mask. For this example, I'm gonna set the opacity to 100% so that I can completely show or hide parts of my image. I also wanna set the resolution to the same values. This will create a perfectly square mask. When I click OK, you'll see that I now have a big red square right in the middle of the preview. To turn this layer into a mask, in the layer type area, select the mask option and then choose transparency from the drop down box. You'll notice that the mask looks a little different now. It's no longer a big red square. Instead, we have the semi-see-through white square. Keep in mind, this is not what your slide looks like. This is just how the mask is depicted as a layer in the preview. To see what your slide will look like, simply preview the slide, or in the layers list, select the layer that is now covered by the mask. What the mask is doing is telling ProShow to only show the part of layer two that appears underneath the mask. Let's click on layer one again. In the preview, you can see that my map is still there, but it will only be visible where this mask appears. If we move or resize this transparency mask layer, we can hide or show different parts of the map. Even though this is now a masking layer, it's still just a layer, which means you can use the adjustments and effects tools to make this more than just a square mask. Under the Adjustments tab in the Editing Tools pane, click the Vignette button. This will allow us to change the shape of the mask. In the vignette type area, change the shape to ellipse. Make sure that the type is set to transparent. In the options area, let's set the size to 10 and make sure all border options are disabled. Once I click OK, you'll see that the mask shape is now a perfect circle that features just a little bit of blending around the outside. When we preview the slide again, instead of just being a square, we've altered the mask in a way that helps make our flat map look more like a globe. Now let's take a look at how transparency masks can be used creatively in your shows. In this example, we see several photos from around Texas appearing inside the shape of the state. Let's take a look at how this was put together. In this slide, you can see that the top layer is a PSD file. Over here on the right, we can see in the selected layer area that this image is just a black shape with a transparent background. As mentioned earlier, the only things that matter when using transparency masks are size, shape, and location. Because this layer has a transparent background, that means only the shape of Texas will become the mask in this slide. When this layer is set to be a transparency mask, the only thing that will be visible underneath the mask will be the parts of the other layers that fit within the Texas shape. Let's walk through creating this example. First, I'm gonna add all the images I want to appear in this slide and drag and drop them all at once by holding down the control key. I'm also going to add a little time to my slide. Next, double click to open slide options and let's rearrange the photos. I want the layer I'm going to use as a mask to be in the layer one position. As you recall in the sample we just watched, the screen was filled with white, which really helped show off the shape of the mask. To do that, let's change the background color for the slide. Back in the layers list, let's click on layer one, then turn on the mask option, 
and choose Transparency from the drop-down list. If you select Layer 2, you can see that it's now covered by the mask, but you can still see the other images behind it. To make sure the mask covers all of these layers, over in the Layers list, click and drag the mask bracket all the way to the bottom of the list. Now, all of your images will appear underneath this mask. To complete the slide, let's click the Effects tab at the top of the screen. For layer 2, I'll click on the second keyframe and drag it over to the 2.5 second mark. Then, I'll click on the layer transition and apply a crossfade. Now, let's do the same thing for layer 3. Click on keyframe 2 and drag it over to around the 4 second mark. Once again, click on the layer transition and apply a crossfade. Now, select layer 4. Drag keyframe 2 to around the 5 second mark. Then, apply a crossfade. When we preview the slide, we'll see each image fade out one at a time underneath the layer mask. For the final touch, let's go back to the masking layer and add a zoom in effect. With keyframe 1 selected, adjust the zoom to around 50%. Now, select keyframe 2, and let's change the zoom so the visible portion of the mask fills the entire preview. Let's also add some rotation. And now, let's take a look at the effect. As our mask zooms and rotates, we can see the images behind it blend from one to another. Using masking in your shows can dramatically change the way you show off your images and videos. Try using some of these techniques in your next slideshow.